Stock car racing is a form of motorsport which sees a variety of formulas from purpose-built single-seaters to full-contact banger racers race around short oval circuits in the UK and beyond. What started out many moons ago as a budget motorsport for enthusiasts is now a thriving, very competitive and not-so-budget community which my family have been involved in for almost all my life, with my dad, grandfather and myself all having raced over the past few decades. However, that journey for me ended a while ago now with my last race being back in 2016. But with that being said... This is my brand new race car, and today I'm hitting the track, as for the first time in seven years, I'm going to be stock car racing. But how did we get here? Well, to answer that question, I have to throw it back a little bit and tell you all a story, which should hopefully give you all a little context as to why after all these years, I'm making a comeback. Nine years ago, a close family friend of ours lost his life suddenly at the age of 31. He was one of my dad's closest friends, both on and off the track, and someone who was there from the very start of my racing career. I mean, his name was literally on the side of the car. In his honour, the Adamins at Memorial Trophy was born, an annual race to which the winner would take home this bad boy custom trophy with Adam's car on top, a trophy which any driver would love to have on their shelf, especially my dad. However, year after year at this race, we would suffer comically bad reliability issues and poor luck, to the point where it seemed like Adam himself would put a curse on my old man to stress him and his hairline out even more. So, going into the 8th annual running of the event last summer, fingers were crossed for my dad just to finish the thing, something which he'd only achieved once before. However, this time, things went a little bit different. <laughs> I've seen my dad compete in and win a lot of races over the years, including a heap load of championships and even the points back in 2017. Yet never during any of those do I remember feeling as tense and as nervous as I did for this. Adam's race isn't a big championship race. There's not double points, a special roof grade or a special prize of winning it. To anyone else, it's just a normal race with a fancy trophy. But for us, this race was everything. It was about remembering an old friend, honoring him and doing him proud. And it's something we never thought we'd see my dad win until that day. So after my dad's very emotional win last year, I decided that for 2023, I was going to join him out there on track. However, as I mentioned at the start of this video, this wouldn't quite be my first rodeo since I have raced stock cars before, back from ages 10 to 16. If you want to know a bit more about all that, I did a video about it a while ago. You can watch it after this one. But basically, after I graduated from the mini stock formula in 2017, I stopped racing to instead pursue other things like move 300 miles away from home and pay nine grand a year for a bit of paper. But now, seven years later, with said degree and 60 grand of debt under my belt, I can't hold back the urge anymore. I need to race. But what exactly will I be racing? Well, these things. Let me introduce you to the Stock Rods, an oval racing formula which sees 1400cc, mainly front wheel drive cars, race side by side in tight packs around a variety of oval circuits in the UK. Unlike the previous cars I used to race, which was a specific formula for under 16s, the Stock Rods are only open for those 16 and over and are strictly non-contact. However, as you can see from the state of my dad's front bumper here, it doesn't always stay that way. There are a select number of cars you can run in this formula, including Vauxhall Novas, Tigras, but by far the most popular car these days is the Corsa C. And that's exactly what I'll be driving. But before we get into preparing my own car for race day, I first need to have a little practice in my dad's car to see what these things are like to drive. So on a practice day in February, that's exactly what we did, as I got strapped in and hit the circuit for the first time in seven years. <laughs> Thank you. 
didn't see, I was very surprised by how quick they were. But despite almost shitting my pants, I'd say the practice went well. I only had about six minutes total on track, but again, that's better than nothing. And I think I was laughing about a second slower than my dad, which again, isn't too awful for the first time driving the cars. Yet, we didn't have time to dwell on that either way, as it was time to move on to the next step of the process. Because, well, boys and girls, now... I've got a f***ing race car, boys. Wait! Obviously, it needs a load of work right now. I mean, it looks pretty dire. At least it's quite straight, though. The colours are changing. We're going to get a sign written all nice, and I'm excited. But first step is to get it clean. So I'm going to get it outside, give the inside a wash, and yeah, we'll go from there. Quit reaching like you're trying to get something out of the cabinet. My kit getting colder than refrigerator magnets. And if you want it, I have it. So I'm going to end this verse right here with an ad lib. So here it is, my brand new race car. Corey the Corsa. <laughs> Great name, I know. Now, since I was only home in Cornwall for the week, me and my dad had to work fast to get what we could done while I was still there before I abandoned him to do all the hard work to come back up here in my office and edit YouTube videos. So we decided the best place to start was with the paint work. Now when I began racing I had a red and silver car, however that soon progressed to blue and silver in order to match with my dad, who in case I haven't mentioned yet has been racing since I was born and had a blue and silver car for the majority of the time. Over the years he's played around with the colours a bit and these days runs this dark purple sort of colour, but for me blue is still the way forward. So we got this sexy shade of blue, a sparkly black and got to work. And as we eventually completed the job, dad told me he had the perfect song for the big reveal. I hope that doesn't get copyrighted, but if it does, it's worth it. But yeah, this is the colour scheme we've gone for. All we need to do now is get some sponsors on the car so I can actually afford to race and afford to eat as well. What do you think about my race car? It's very nice. What do you think I'm going to do in the race car? Crash. How badly? Bad. Cheers for the support, Mum. The next step consisted of many long nights in the garage, actually building and putting together parts for the car, before I then had to leave the old man to it as I came back to reality in Manchester to earn some money by editing, editing, and editing some more. But even though I was away from it, I could not get the race car out of my head. So we're about two weeks out from the race now, and the excitement is definitely building. I've been waiting literally years for this moment. Ever since I stopped racing when I was 16, obviously stuff took over in life. I went to uni, I moved away. But no matter what I was doing, and I mean, I love making YouTube videos. You YouTube is my dream job, right? I've been doing it since I was 10. If I didn't love it, I wouldn't do it. But I cannot get out of me this bug for racing, honestly. No matter where I go, you know, whether I'm traveling somewhere or even just editing videos of other people driving around or racing cars or talking about cars, all I can think all the time is, I want to be in that. Let me have a go. I just want to drive a car. Basically, the race isn't that far away. I'm really excited. Hopefully we have a good day. It's going to be so surreal racing my dad as well. Like I've watched this man race ever since I was like two years old. He's been my idol. He's been my fucking role model. But yeah, I'm racing my dad on an oval circuit. I grew up watching him race on in a formula. I grew up watching him racing. To me, this is like I'm Mick Schumacher about to race Michael Schumacher in an F1 car around like, I don't know, Hockenheim. And not to mention the fact all my family's going to be there as well. You got like my grandparents are going to be there, like the extended family. If things go well, it's going to be a great day. But if I spin at turn one, I'm not living it down, lads. Before long, it was race week and I trekked back home to finally give my dad a hand. So the first order of business was of course aesthetics because mechanically I'm about as useful as a paper umbrella. <laughs> so it was down to me to make the design for the car that a much more talented man would then make a reality on the real car. And after showing him my pro Photoshop design, the man in question then went ham with his paintbrush and air gun and created this masterpiece. Boys and girls, it's my pleasure to present to you the number 51 Aidan Vincent driven stock rod, Corey the Corsa. <laughs> There you have it lads, the whip is now all painted, ready to go. We've got the sign right on now, all the sponsors are there, including this big boy pasty on the bonnet. On the side we've got Mobile Eco Tuning, Car Hire Cornwall, and of course Fintech Automotive, which is my dad's garage, alongside a massive number 51. I told the guy I wanted it NASCAR style, and I mean, I think he's delivered. On the back we've kept it pretty simple, with just one sponsor at the top, that being Suit Brothers Custom Tailors. And of course on the back, the most important message, subscribe to Mr. Aiden Rule. Really appreciate all the people sponsoring me, I know it mustn't be easy putting your name on this car knowing it's most likely to end up in the fence at turn one but yeah we're getting there now we're nearly done needs to do a few more techie bits on the inside and like do some stuff for the engine and bits like that and actually make sure it runs properly but yeah massive thanks to signs by andy as well the guy who actually did the sign writing it looks mega lads i like it a lot so as the big day drew ever closer it was more and more late nights for me and dad as we both got our cars ready for action and before we even had time to think about it it was game day It's 
race day, lads. I'm currently on the chateau where I usually am on race day. I'm excited, but I'm bloody nervous. It's also about 20 degrees and my hay fever is kicking off. So now it's race time. I should probably explain to you how the day's gonna work. The stock rods will do two heats of 20 laps around the circuit, scoring points along the way, which then sets the grid for the final race in which Adam's trophy will be given to the winner. There'll then be a grand national at the end of the day, which is pretty much just another final with a much less fancy trophy. <laughs> at the start of the race, the cars line up in packs known as roof grades, with the better drivers starting further back to ensure tight and fair racing. The white roofs, aka the novices, aka me, start at the front, then followed by the yellows, the blues, the reds, and then finally the champions who start at the very, very back. So for my first race, I'd be starting on pole, lads. But before we get into that, we first have to do a little practice session. So we're getting ready for practice now, lads. In the words of Thomas Skinner, I don't get nervous. But I'm starting to get a bit shaky, you know? I mean, I'm a little bit weak. No, I didn't put my GoPro in the car for practice, which, looking back, may be my biggest regret of this entire year. As me and my dad lined up next to each other and went on to race side by side for the first ever time. For years, I'd grown up watching him on track, idolizing him as my racing hero. And now, there I was, holding him off going into turn one. It was, of course, only practice, but even still, getting to properly race my dad side by side is something I will never forget. However, I would like to forget how quickly he then pulled away from me once he passed me. <laughs> so, practice was done. The parade lap soon followed before finally it was time for my first race in seven years. <laughs> made my way onto the track, waved to my family on the sidelines, lined up on pole and tried to focus the only way I know how. Okay, here we go. Focus. Speed. speed. I, I am speed. speed. One winner. 42, 42 losers. I eat losers, losers for breakfast. Now, you're probably wondering why I'm panicking here. No, I've not just bottled it and decided I no longer want to race. It's actually because I've just looked down and realized that my harness has become unhooked from the roll cage, basically meaning my straps weren't attached. Oh, Tony's. Go for a That's probably what he's asking them to do. So after trying to explain that I needed a marshal to dig around my crutch in order to make sure I didn't die, we were eventually all sorted, and it was time to refocus. Speed. I am... I'd got away well and immediately started to pull a gap on the 73. But I didn't know where everyone else was or how fast they were closing the gap on me. So as far as I was concerned, they were coming and full send was the only option. race had gone on, I'd managed to put a huge gap on the rest of the field, who were all getting caught up amongst themselves whilst I made the most of being in clean air. And by the time the five laps to go sign came out, my dad and the other top drivers were well over half a lap behind me. So at this point, it was just down to me to keep my cool and drive the car. I'd already done all the hard work at this point, so only a disaster could rob me of this victory. And well, that's exactly what started to happen. was starting to make some very, very strange noises, popping and banging as I powered it down the straights. It wasn't killer just yet, but we still had four laps to go. If I wasn't trying to drive a car at this point, just know that everything on me would have been crossed. <laughs>
win on debut. I couldn't believe it. When I first started racing mini stocks in this very circuit over 10 years ago, it took me over a year to get my first W. And now I'd gone and done it on the first time of asking with my whole family there to see it. Now, yes, I did start off the front, but so did every other driver on their first ever race. So shut it. Let me have this, all right? Instead of being welcomed into the pits by a crowd of cheering fans, it was instead a bloody war zone. Since, as you may have noticed as I was celebrating my maiden win, my dad was pulling off the track with his engine literally blowing up. Which obviously isn't ideal, although I guess I can now technically say that I lapped my dad in my first ever race. Gonna whack that one in the Father's Day card. <laughs> but with everyone working hard trying to change dad's engine, it meant it was just down to me and a few other blokes who actually knew what they were doing with engines to try and solve Corey's issue. And after finding some problems with the carburetor, we thought we'd done just that. So we went Went out for race two of the day. This time I lined up third, right behind number 235 here, who, as the green flag dropped, didn't get the best getaway. <laughs> Oops. The start was so bad, in fact, that they red flagged it and lined us all up again. This time, I started second on the outside as my victim was now on the infield. I didn't break his car by hitting him. He just didn't get away off the line very well because his car had an issue, not because he was slow. It wasn't my fault, all right? <laughs> Once again, my start was decent as I cleared the fellow white roof immediately and got my head down ready to try and replicate race one. However, as soon as we got to lap two, it became clear that that wasn't gonna happen. Corey's misfire was back and this time with a vengeance. I couldn't even try and power through it this time as I lost nearly all the oomph I had left, forcing me to retire to the infield after just three laps, which of course I took very well. another round of attempting to fix the issue in the pits, it was then time for the grand final, Adam's race. Thanks to my win in race one, I managed to qualify eighth, but as I sat there revving the car, I already knew all was not well. Yep, Corey still had issues. And as we got underway, it took all but two laps for me to pull off again with no power, which I took even better this time. Decent race though, working his way up to third, as our friend Callum took the big W. After the race, I felt very deflated, I can't lie. I was obviously in no way expecting to actually win the final or even compete with the top dogs, but to be robbed of the chance of even trying, especially after all the late nights and work that's gone in on the car, both from me and my dad and everyone else, it just hurts a little bit. sometimes lads but all was not lost remember lads we still had one last chance of getting a good result the grand national was in about 10 minutes time so it was all hands on deck trying to get this car ready and with seconds to spare we finally think we solved the issue so i got back out there on track lined up for the grand national and prepared myself because this race was all about redemption christ i'm making this a bit dramatic aren't i <laughs> like in the first race i was gone off the start pulling a nice gap over james in the 73 car who himself had a decent margin over the rest of the field as well however in my hustle to get away i've been absolutely demolishing my tires so about halfway in they started to go off and now he was right on my bumper 
Looks like we've got a race on our hands, lads. So second was all I could manage, which obviously is still a decent result and I did really enjoy the battle with James. However, just like every race car driver who thinks they're Lewis Hamilton, I just wasn't happy with losing lads. To be fair, it was a rookie error. I went out way too hard in that race, killed my tyres, so I only have myself to blame, lads. I could have just kept it calm, drove away, and not even had to battle with James in the first place. But you know, that's racing. I won't make that mistake again. And we have to remember, lads, this was my first race meeting. And on reflection, I can't complain that much with a first and a second at the end of the day, can I? Obviously, luck wasn't on our side with those other two races, and you can't help but wonder how the day would have gone if Corey hadn't shit himself. But as Gina De Campo once said, if my grandmother had wheels, she would have been a bike. So yeah, that was my first ever stock car race in seven years. Years. I loved it so much. 1000% going to do it again this year at some point, if not multiple times this year. Thanks again to my dad for putting in all the hard work to get the car ready. I'm starting to feel like Lance Stroll here, boys, as I sit in comfort while my dad does all the hard work. But yeah, I can't put into words how grateful I am. Honestly, dad, thank you. And to everyone else who also helped prep the car and, you know, fix it on race day, thank you as well. You know who you all are. But yeah, lads, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Stay safe, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.